Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Oliver Kaufmacher, who is Vice President Product Management INEA, E N E A, we'll talk about that, PAC Business Unit. Oliver, welcome and thanks for talking to us. Let's begin with that. INEA, what is it? INEA is a Swedish company, um, basically 50 years old and very diverse in terms of activities. Uh, the one that we are working on is fairly, fairly much focused on telecommunications, so larger telecoms and providing all their software, uh, a very software-oriented approach to provide network functions to tier one telecoms. Perfect, that's put you right in your slot. Now we can start properly. Let's begin with this one. 5G, we've all heard the hype. Perhaps we've all been part of the hype, but it's happening in reality now. Do you think or will subscriber user data management change with 5G and if so how and why? We do think it, uh, there's a tremendous significant change when, when moving from a 4G architecture to a 5G architecture. Um, of course there are many technical things that change in terms of protocols and interfaces um, but the more relevant and more important piece is that the the 5G standardization expli ex explicitly asks for split of data and function. So the subscriber data is stored in something like a backend, a, a universal data repository that keeps all the subscriber data. Mm -hmm. And there are many applications that are using this data, uh, but are themselves no longer storing it. So there's one single central repository and front ends like uh, the one that we believe is the most important uh, is the, the user data manager, but there's also policy control authentication and the number of other pieces that are all using the same single data in the back end. Now, we've talked about 5G and we will again in a second, but we're going to live, all of us are going to live with 4G as well for quite some time as 5G begins to arrive fully and as 4G slowly dies away in some parts of the world but could last for many, many years in others. What is your view of the relationship between 4G and 5G in terms of subscriber data? Does it, will it how much difference is there and is it significant? Well, the, the data itself or the subscriber itself from its own personal view, isn't, isn't, there's no big change about that. But the aspect of being active both in a 4G or in a legacy network and in 5G and specifically the aspect of moving from one network to the other is very important. As you mentioned, uh, either in terms of coverage or regional aspects. So how a subscriber moves from 4G to 5G in terms of moving from cell to cell is very important. Sure. So, th and that, that has many implications on the interworking between the 4G network and the 5G network, but if there is a sin single central subscriber database, then it's just a question of the appropriate front ends. Yeah, so if you have a 4G front end and a 5G front end, but using the same data in the back end, the same subscriber data in the back end, that from our view is the easiest and the most, uh, uh, also the most robust approach of doing it because you have no double provisioning, no uh, consistency problems between the two networks. The thing that's most important to lots and lots of certainly domestic subscribers is the SIM. Um, can, we talk about, can we talk about SIM cards and interworking and standardization vis-a-vis -vis 4G and 5G? This is a pretty important point for the operator. Um, an operator today is uh, for commercial or for cost reasons unable to swap all SIM cards, be it 3G and 4G, uh, towards a 5G SIM card, it's simply too expensive and the logistics probably also won't work in, 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 in short time. So the ability of a 5G network to use a 4G SIM card to authenticate and attach a subscriber to a 4, 5G network is very important. So using the existing SIM card for a 5G subscriber, uh, uh, for a 5G network to enable a 4G subscriber to be locked into that as well is one key thing that operator needs to take into account. Yes. In addition, it's also the other way around. So there will be new devices, be it IoT or new smartphones with 5G radio that have a 5G SIM card. Those, because of coverage reasons, also need to be able to lock into a 4G network. So interworking works in both directions. You need to authenticate a 4G subscriber in a 5G network, but also a 5G subscriber or SIM card in a 4G network. So the interworking here again is very important. What about standardization? What are the implications, the impact on current standards and how will it change? A 3GPP or GSMA uh, specified an interface that allows fairly seamless interworking 
between uh, the HSS, which is the 4G subscriber repository, and the UDM, which is the equivalent in a 5G network. They specified an interface being, being a service-based interface, so a, a HTTP-based interface that, that connects the UDM and the HSS. That's the preferred option of GSMA. That was specified, is currently being standardized, uh, and of course will be supported by us. It has implications um, also on the HSS. So the, the problem with that approach is sometimes that you also need a new version of the HSS. Updating an HSS is a bit of a pain in the neck of an operator, so other options uh, to, to deliver that interworking can also be useful in, in many cases. Let's talk about there are these monolithic organizations and then there are smaller, perhaps fleeter organ organizations and companies that provide and pride themselves on providing best-in-breed solutions and so on. Let's talk a little bit more about Enea and where you fit into this. Yeah, of course, we, we, we are biased uh, in, in, in that point. So our view is the best in breed, uh, best of breed approach is, is the most uh, key reason, or is the most important key reason for operators uh, when they move to a 5G network. So uh, a monolithic approach, in a way, even contradicts the design of a 5G core, because 5G core by intention separates storage of subscriber or whatever data from the various network functions. So this is actually the key method or, or the key way for operators to, to allow a best in breed solution, having separate vendors for each uh, of the different domains in, or subdomains in that network. Yeah? And I think it's for specifically tier ones, uh, important to enable their future architecture to, to use multiple vendors at the same time. The data layer or the user data or universal data repository is obviously a key element. You don't want to store the data on a per vendor basis. You want to store them once and then allow multiple different vendors to access the same data. That gives you a robust architecture uh, uh, allowing multiple vendors here. We believe this is crucial. This is also the INEA belief and that's in a way, the reason of being here, or the reason for, for INEA starting to deliver certain software components, but not all of them. We only do what we are really good at, which is subscriber data management, we, we, and we partner with all the others to deliver a full-blown or a, a, a complete network architecture, but we focus on that, what we are very good at. Will the trend towards open source in just about everything also have an effect on you? It's a fair question. Um, it's, it's a bit a tough one because some operators uh, and also some, some, some vendors thought that open source might completely replace the, the or, or, or really dramatically change the vendor landscape. Our view and I think uh, also justified by what we see in the industry is that open source really changes the ecosystem, changes the service mesh, changes the platform in which all vendors are using their software, but the applications themselves, they remain with, with the vendors. Yeah? So uh, actually to a certain extent we're doing less than before because in the old days we did everything from framework, platform and the application. Uh, today we're only doing the application and a bit of framework, the, the rest is open source. So this split also allows smaller vendors like us to do more than in the past because we do not need to do any, uh, all of the, of the backend and, and, and framework stuff. Very interesting indeed. Oliver Kaufmacher, thank you very much. Thank you.